Two landmark verdicts were reached in a very short time and they have restored to a small degree my faith in hum humanity or at least in the judicial branch of the US. The first lawsuit is about the herbicide glyphosate which was developed and sold by Monsanto since the 70s, is the most commonly used herbicide in the US and is now thought to cause cancer, prompting more than 11,000 lawsuits against Monsanto. The first guilty verdict was reached in August last year, convicting Monsanto to pay 290 million in damages. Monsanto appealed against the verdict, so no damages have been paid up to now, but now we have a second verdict, which is considered a bellwether case, meaning it will probably used, be used as a precedent in other cases. I couldn't find it the exact sum for the second verdict, but if we take the 290 million of the first and multiply them by 11,000, we get a little over 3 trillion, far more than the net worth of any particular company. So we can see why this is considered a big deal, not just for Monsanto, but also for Bayer, which took over Monsanto in 2016 while lawsuits were already pending. Smart. <laughs> very, very, very smart. The verdicts have done massive damage to Bayer's stock, which has plunged from uh, 112 billion to 64 billion, less than the 66 billion it paid for Monsanto. Why exactly does a pharmaceutical company need to buy an agricultural company? Is this some kind of weird radical integration thing where the pharmaceutical company develops the, medic, uh, the medicine used to cure like the cancer um, that is developed by the materials used from, by the uh, agricultural company? I don't think this makes much sense. To be honest, I don't think what these two things have in common. And I don't see why they should be in one giant company that is then worth like a hundred billion. Apart from that, of course, I'm glad about this ruling and let's hope it kills Monsanto and maybe some other pretty terrible agricultural companies later, <laughs> like with similar rulings. The second lawsuit was by the Wild Earth Guardians, Physicians for so Social Responsibility and the Western Environmental Law Center and directed against the Bureau of Land Management. Rudolf Contreras, the judge tasked with the case, said The BLM did not adequately quantify the climate change impacts of oil and gas leasing and must consider the cumulative impact of greenhouse gas emissions. This decision stalled drilling on more than 1,200 square kilometers which is about 30,000 acres of federal land and hopefully set a precedent for the 52,000 square kilometers the Trump administration made available to oil and gas, which is more than half the size of Austria. The administration also plans to make large portions of the Atlantic available for drilling because we know how well that works. <coughs> and one of the officials tasked with land and minerals management spoke out in a meeting with oil gap companies about what he really thought about the Trump presidency. One of the things I have found absolutely thrilling in working with, the, with this administration One of the things I have found absolutely thrilling in working with this administration is the president has a knack for keeping the attention of the media and the public focused somewhere else while we do the work that needs to be done on the behalf of the American people. Fuck you too, asshole. Apart from that, the decision of the judge was a good one. Of course, it's basically a common sense decision that as a government, when you make decisions, you should consider the environmental impacts. But of course, the Trump presidency has no decency, so they will probably appeal against the decision. And if the whole lawsuit lands before the Supreme Court, because the Republicans have stolen one Supreme Court seat and another judge just decided to retire while the Trump administration was in place. 
now that they have a pretty solid grip on the Supreme Court, so there are good chances the decision will get overturned. But in the meantime, let's be happy. <sighs> Can we talk about how stupid uh, in an institution the Supreme Court is? I mean, the whole idea of the three branches of government is that they hold, should hold each other in check. But if all of the judges are elected by um, the executive branch, and if the dis executive branch is furthermore coupled to the legislative branch uh, by the same elections, then those three branches of government won't hold each other in check, will they? And so the whole three branches system sounds good in theory, but it, as it is installed, especially in the US, but also in Austria or probably most countries, it doesn't really work all that well. But especially the whole dependence of the, uh, of the judicial branch um, to the legislative, uh, sorry, the executive branch is especially grating. And as I said, this whole system just doesn't work. And I'm very open to the idea. Of course, I'm not an American, so I can't really decide anything. But Ameri the, the normal Americans can also can't decide much. So it doesn't matter all that much, but I'm very open to uh, the idea of packing the Supreme Court, so installing more Supreme Court judges than there are usually, which th I think has never been done, although um, Roosevelt has packed other courts, but not the Supreme Court, and when he tried, um, so with Roosevelt, I mean FDR, not Theodore Roosevelt, and when he... Um, he tried to do it with the Supreme Court, but the outcry was just too big. But when he did it with the other courts, he got a lot of shit done, which is one of the reasons why the US is not worse off than it is right now. Um, still, this gives some hope for the American judicial system, and it's not that bad a day. Globally speaking, which most days are bad days. Let's not kid ourselves. This day is a little less bad than most days. So this is, yay, yay us. <laughs>